Okay, well, this is uh, Bruce again here at my uh, Colorado Mountain Labs, and um, today I've got a B&K Precision 1856C. It's a 5 hertz to 2.4 gigahertz counter. Um, it measures that uh, that range in two different uh, two different inputs. We have an A range, A input, reads from 5 hertz to 100 megahertz. And a B range or B input that measures from 50 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. Each one uh, has its own oscillator and it's calibrated uh, separately. Uh, I've calibrated both and uh, as we'll see as we go along, uh, I calibrated it accurately in, in both cases. Now the unit also measures uh, period from 5 hertz to 2 megahertz. And it will totalize an input, so it'll count the inputs something that might get used for timing um, between events. Uh, there's an input on the back, a jack on the back, that allows you to put a logic signal, a zero or a one in there. And I believe the, uh, the one allows you to count and the zero locks you out, holds the count. So you can, you can stop and hold the count and, uh, and see uh, when the event's been achieved, how, how many uh, pulses have gone through. Uh, I'll provide a, uh, a user manual with it, which has some calibration information, and, a, and I'll also provide a, um, a circuit diagram. Um, the circuit diagram is actually for the 1856 um, um, 1.3 GHz counter, so there's obviously some difference, but there's enough uh, correlation between the two that uh, it's worth having that... Uh, that circuit diagram anyway uh, as a guideline. I was able to use it myself. It's got a nice stand. Uh, the unit is in nice shape. I take you through that as we go along so bear with me and we'll uh, we'll give it a go. Well as you can see uh, we've got the 1856 calibrated to 10 megahertz uh, to with a less than a hertz. Now with the standard kind of um, uh, time base that this has, it's going to vary with temperature some. Uh, over a 40 degrees centigrade change, it'll vary up to 100 hertz. So you can expect to see a 5 to 10 hertz shift um, if it goes from cold to warm. But you can see that it's been calibrated well. The unit is, a, unit is in nice looking shape. Um, I'll point out the flaws. We have a uh, a spot down here where the rubber, this is a rubber um, escutcheon ring, and it was split at this point, and it's been glued, and it's holding. I've had the unit, uh, had the, the um, rubber off, the unit opened up, took some photos of it. You can see them in the uh, photo list, but <clears throat> put it all back together, and uh, everything's held. So if you're reasonable with it, that should hold. Um, taking a look at the rear end here, we'll see if we can... There's the oscillator A and B calibration points. Here's your totalized start and stop uh, input. And we have uh, serial number 001-08-0010. And, uh, and the other thing left to show you is the bottom. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go. It has a nice stand. It's working. And uh, we're going to hook it up and uh, we're going to take a look at, uh, oh, I don't know, about 1.1 uh, gigahertz, something like that. Uh, that's about as high as I can generate. We'll generate with that with this uh, 8640B uh, and a doubler. And we'll see what we get. And I'll compare it to my Philips, which is a microprocessor controlled unit. Okay, bear with me and I'll set this. Well, as you can notice here, since I showed you the bottom a moment ago, I uh, 
Went ahead and installed some new rubber feet to replace the missing rubber feet that were... Three of the feet were missing, anyway. And uh, it'll help protect uh, somebody's shelf, make this thing a little more sturdy. We're reading channel B, uh, 1100 uh, megahertz, uh, which is 1.1 gigahertz. Coming out of that 8640B up there. And if I change the gate on this thing, we see that we pick up an extra decade of resolution. Same thing on the next level. And in the final level, she would shift off to the left. We wouldn't be able to see the leading one. And I'm not sure. It takes 10 seconds to uh, make the read on this. Um, what else? Uh, we'll switch the function in a moment. We'll go back to the um, uh, A input and we'll test some things there. Yeah, we shifted. So we've got the 10999914, but it takes a long time to pick up that extra digit. Yeah, it's not hardly worth it in most cases. Um, let's go ahead and. Um, We'll go to the A input, and we'll switch from our HP, which we only needed for the high frequency aspect. We go back to the 10 megahertz bench standard, and there we go. We are reading here 10,000 kilohertz. And if we change the gate time, there's your 10,000 with two zeros. Still reading kilohertz, here's 10,000, three zeros. And then we have the 10 second period where we're going to shift again. Yeah, let's see if I can talk through this. There we go. We shifted, we've got all zeros. So we've got it calibrated quite well for this temperature right now which is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. If we want to read in megahertz, we can read megahertz here. We're reading 10 megahertz. Gate. And here we'll have the full resolution in 10 seconds. And we'll be displaying everything since we're in megahertz. Um, there's 10 megahertz. We want to read a period. Now the period on this is... Okay, this B and K will read period from a frequency of 5 hertz to about 2 megahertz. We're right now reading one megahertz, so we're getting a one microsecond period. And if we uh, change to two, which I just changed to two, meg two megahertz, we see that our period becomes 0.5 microseconds. So that's working. Let's take her. Let's take her down. Um, 500 kilohertz, okay. There's 500 kilohertz, and we are reading two microseconds per cycle. So let's see, if it was one megahertz and you got one microsecond, and if you got two, then that has to be half of that, so it would be 500 kilohertz, so that would be right. And that's... Uh, we're going to have to switch to an audio unit in order to be able to do better than that. And we can do that with this uh, 3320B, with some reasonableness. Let's go ahead, and we want to read 5 hertz. All right, we're feeding in a 5 hertz signal from this 3320B. We're measuring the period. That 5 hertz signal is coming in. We're getting about um, 200,000 microseconds. And um, 
believe that would be about right. You know, we see that we're having a little bit of difference. That's because the oscillator up there is hitting 5 hertz to within two decimal places, but we're reading it to within, uh, well, quite a few more. We're reading period here. But we're not having a problem at 5 hertz. We're reading that. Let's, um, let's see. We're going to go to totalize. Go ahead and reset. This is a 10 hertz mode. So about every um, every 10 counts, we got about a second here. And um, there is an input port on the back of the unit, which uh, if you supply a uh, a logic high signal, um, you count, and if you go logic low, you uh, you hold. I believe that's the way it works. It's either that or the reverse. We'll check on that. But so the totalize function is uh, it's working. We can hold the count. It doesn't. Okay. So if we release the, it actually holds the counting process all together, and it'll resume when you release it. So. Reset. We have a uh, uh, times 10 uh, attenuator so we can read a high input signal. We have a uh, low pass uh, frequency filter so we filter out any higher frequencies and we pass the lows. Uh, really, pretty much it. We have a check function. We internally check and we see if we're reading 10 megahertz which we are from the oscillator and it allows us to uh, we can change our gate so we can see that all the digits are functioning in 10 seconds we'll have all zeros there we go so that's it It's a beautiful unit. It's working well. Um, it'll give a capability up to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it'll allow you to measure period. It uh, will measure frequencies from 5 up. Um, handy little unit for a bench. So if you're interested, happy bidding to you and thanks for listening.